Hey guys, okay, so these are, this is going to be a series of tens, and I'm just going to show, I think I'm going to do these like one at a time, so they'll each have their own video, and um, and I'll talk to you guys a little bit about packing and things. I'm thinking of just sort of wrapping these like, um, you know, like the Easter basket kind of things where I put the top on the bottom, because they really are overflowing, some, some of them, and I know once I take all of this stuff out of there, holy crafting Jesus to put it all back in there. So yeah. Anyway, so this is the first one. It's a black box. Um, it you know it's got some rust, and I purposefully use a lot of boxes that are not in perfect condition. That are not, um, you know, they have to have a little bit of rust somewhere and have been used. Um, that's the whole point of these um, flow tins or inspiration craft boxes, whatever you want to call them. Um, and so. This one's really nice, and you can see the rust there. It's kind of beat up, and it's got marks on there. I tried to get those off, but they won't come off. Um, it measures, and this one I got, um, oh my gosh, I think my mom might have given this one to me. There's the um, pretty lady there, and I sort of themed a lot of the pieces in here around sometimes around the tin itself um yeah but they're full guys and they're so fun especially if you're new to crafting or you're a seasoned crafter i think it's just fun to receive something like this because there's just tons of surprises and it's not like what you already have in your in your stash um that's nine by eight and five eighths and then the depth of it is three and three four okay and that's with the lid and I didn't squish it down all the way okay so this will be box number one this is the first one so let me just go ahead and open it I won't turn it upside down because if I do um, yeah things will probably just really fall out okay um, let's see here so there's the top of it again and I love that it's it sort of um, it's sort of gibson girly kind of sort of i don't know but also sort of art deco-y um kind of thing i'm not sure what was in here and it's got some other pretty patterns on there as well okay so let's just take a look i'm not sure how i'm going to be able to spread this around um i will tell you um that with this particular box um and again i was sort of going with the orangey reddy bluey goldy yellowy kind of colors there i have some old tool i have some beautiful antique dusky pink tool i've showed it on camera before and then i also have a beautiful burgundy tool and then some satiny um colors that i'm putting in my asian um box and so I will wrap some of that around um, for this particular tin as well. Okay, so let me just jot that down quickly so I don't forget because I will forget. Well, not really. I write it all down, but sometimes I, I might. Okay, and then so, so I'll wrap that really pretty on some kind of, you know, something that's decorative and sewing. And then I also want to say that when I uh, list these in my Etsy store, that's where they'll be, and they're going straight in the Etsy shop, um, I will list them as flow tins, story box tins, um, uh, inspiration craft boxes, sewing notion tins, those kinds of things, but it is a mix. Um, and after I do the tins, I've got two a winter sort of I picked up the theme from the Roxy Girls the theme of blues and reds those deep pretty reds um, and whites and creams you know for a wintry look for a Christmassy look so you'll be able to play there's a lot to play around with those two um, those won't come in tins there there were two really gorgeous beautiful um, blue I still may get them I'm not sure yet um, tins that I wanted to get they're round and they have pine cones on the top the only thing is is that they had an emblem of Texas under the pine cones and you know I kind of wanted these to be sort of um, you know just sort of themed out not that specific um, if, if that makes sense so yeah but those may just come in packs 
packages, the crinkly paper stuff. Okay, so this is a sewing notion box. Um, it's a box that hopefully inspires you. You can pull from it. You can certainly use a lot of it for stitchery, for embroidery. There's junk journaling um, pa uh, papers and pieces in here that you can play around with. Um, so it can go like all sorts of ways and there's just a ton of sewing stuff okay so I'm just gonna start I'm gonna sit this over to the side because it's gonna get really crammed really really fast um, and I probably will try to capture a couple of pictures while I'm doing this to free up some Etsy um, time okay so there's some um, peachy and I'm not gonna talk guys really for real there's no point in me talking because if you don't know what these are about just go back and look at my other flow tans um, and the videos on on those um, they're in my YouTube channel somewhere it's not that hard to find it just search flow tans um, in my uh, YouTube okay so there's some unopened very peachy color bias tape and there are two used. A lot of this is used, recycled, vintage. There's a mix of modern in here a little bit. Um, you'll know it. I mean, you guys are experts. You'll know it. There's some pretty orange and red gloss. I put some playing cards in here. And these are vintage um, in reds, oranges, yellows, again, to sort of try to play up the idea of this beautiful redhead lady and then I put the facing of these as opposed to the backs you can use the backs if you want to but I like um, this large lettering and then I put this queen of spade in there for the red and greens to come out and then this beautiful red and yellow um, oh Jesus whatever that says right there I can't see it sorry <laughs> sorry guys there we go Georgian door in Dublin so those are Irish an Irish cottage looking kind of place I like that there is one needle in here and if you're new to my channel hi and welcome and thank you um, I tend to use a lot of recycle things so something like this you could use in a sewing journal the packaging I love that it has the acetate on there there is one needle in there and that is cloth so there's a lot of pieces that are used um, but they're very very like I would never throw this packaging away ever because we just don't see it anymore like that and these are made were made in England um, there's some extra button cards um, uh, uh, envelopes I'm sorry so you can put something down in there a lot of this packaging again you could use in a uh, sewing journal I thought she was really pretty there's a rose and the blues that kind of goes with the blues of her and greens of her dress and here is an expressionism um, Kodak film this is some um, painter I got these from a long time ago they're from the 60s 70s I think and there's just some um, seam binding in red I guys I'll have to tell you let me just keep showing um, and like even this packaging here is worthy of saving this is unopened but this packaging um, they don't make it like that anymore where do you see 15 cents right and this is that twill tape and I know a lot of the young seamstresses um, enjoy um, need <laughs> find it a necessity element to their sewing projects um, but while I'm doing this I the one thing I don't like taking it all out is grouping it all together I love for the box to be a surprise so you just kind of pull things out but you can see I'm already starting to group kind of group things together and if it doesn't look like this <laughs> it won't look like this when you get it it's so fun when it's eclectic and I don't know I may just start selling them like that with without going through them but anyway for for now this is what what I'm doing um, there's a um, 
measuring tape in red. I don't know what you use these for. I forgot what my aunt used them for. They're very pointy, so be careful. But they have something to do with sewing and measuring stuff. <laughs> I don't know. And there's a bag of beads and these pretty blacks and um, sort of blacks and golds that's picking up, you know, from the design on there. And the tin itself, it's a rusty tin. I'll show you the, the inside of it once we're done. So there's some beads. And there is a um, just a snippet of old um, linen. Here is one of these thingies. I guess that's a pattern marker. I don't know. Um, it's a Dritz pattern marker. Um, there is a flower from a great Amy's estate. I threw away a lot of her stuff um, recently, which broke my heart. But I don't have room for it anymore, and I'm tr really trying to pare down um, a lot of things that I have. Um, but she liked to have blues, and her favorite color was blue. Um, blues and different things like that around her house. But she also had real flowers, too. She was a, a, a super uh, natural uh, gardener. All of the women were in my family. And there's a piece of that um, fabric I showed you guys. I guess you call that bunt shape. And that's really pretty and orangey and and yellowy and vibrant. I put some of that paisley in there and some of that in there and this, all these bright reds and oranges, very pretty colors. Here's a piece of beautiful peach lim uh, linen and it may not look peach on the camera there but it's really pretty, very nice to stitch down into. Here is some um, old feed sack uh, with uh, measuring tape on it, and I just love that so much. I think that's so beautiful. Um, here is a spool. I didn't unravel it or put it on there myself. It came like that. Um, a lot of times with these tins, what I try to do is make them look like they were just found in someone's house or someone's estate sale. And they're just chock full of all kinds of little necessities, little little things that you can sew and create your projects with. This is a, um, oh my God, I forgot what kind of needle that is. Anyway, it's in a piece of card, corrugated, a, a corrugated cardboard. And then here is just a pretty paper, um, scrapbook paper. And you can write on that, you can use it in your journals. Here is a lovely piece of uh, beautiful linen from an old hanky that I got um, and cut the flowers out. Um, very nice to stitch with. Here is a couple of doilies that are remnants. And a lot of, again, these tins were um, definitely inspired by flowish things and all things flowish. They're inspired by my first put together of junk journaling kits. Um, because I would just grab whatever I saw you guys use um, in your books. And it was just, you know, a way to um, sort of celebrate that. So it's the same feel here. It's very, very flowish um, and inspirational. Um, this is one of... Uh, now let me write down some things here. Because there's a couple of things I got from ladies I want to include. That's from the teacher's table, Elaine at the teacher's table and when I get um, settled guys I will start sending out my happy mail again I got a lot of happy mail out but I still have a lot to send out and Elaine is on that list isn't that pretty and these are just little tiny um, stitching uh, I love this I should probably probably practice something like this before I start my journal of stitchery when I get settled in um, a, you know a, a space um, and so I'm, I might I might do that. I don't know. I just love these. These are so cute. So I put a green one in there for you. Um, that's Elaine at the teacher's table. And anybody I mention, I'll write. I'll put them in the description box. I won't forget. Okay. Um, then we've got some embroidery here. It's really pretty. So there's a nice piece. This again, ten you can use. And then I'm going to stop talking and just show you. And if you have questions, you can just ask me. Um, 
it's it's a flowish tin like you can do junk journaling with it you can do stitching with it you can do your stitchery journal stuff with it um, I put in a piece of old quilt um, this quilt it's a quilt top I'm learning all the lingo guys I'm learning the lingo <laughs> it's a quilt top and this is a quilt I picked up from an estate sale and it's so beautiful you've got some yellow trying to stick with the theme you've got some black and red and these beautiful cotton linen pieces here there's some pink there's not very much pink um, in there but I just love it and there's some blue flowers and um, teal flowers and then just to remind you because I love to sort of tout <laughs> and praise and you know hand stitching I just love it I love all stitching but I, it's something about hand stitching that's very homely feels home home to me homish <laughs> oh god guys my brain's getting ready for school so that's why I'm all loosey-goosey now I can relax a little bit um, sort of until until time so that's really pretty I love that I think it's gorgeous and then uh, let's see I put in this old piece with this lovely um, handwriting, it says Adeloso Antonio R. Garcia. So that's really lovely. And it's just an old piece. Great for junk journaling. Great for preservation, handwriting preservation. Here is some lace in a peachy color. And I just put a little pin. And be very careful if you order one of these. Um, I try to put pins and stick them, tuck them down in very well so that they're not pokey pokey. Um, but just, you know, just be careful. There's lace and peachy. This is very 70s, uh, 80s. And then here are, oh, look at this. I'm sharing. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this so much. This is um, one of Carla E. Creations, Carla Frizzell. One of her beautiful um, pins, and her these pins are old. I found in when I was cleaning stuff up and organizing, I had some old one like the, these before, but I did find some doll pins um, that are they're still old. These are from the 80s, I think, but these are old. I love these so much, and she's wrapped it generously, very generously, around with some pretty eyelet there. I love that. So I'll link Carla's. Um, and I've linked her before, but I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to do a lot of linking, guys. As soon as I can get organized and, and kind of re reboot myself here. Um, here, I think these little pieces came out of some of Jessica Rapp's packaging that I got. Because I, I bought several of her books for my students. Um, and what comes with those books is sacks of just ephemera and all kinds of stuff I wouldn't give it all to those kids I kept some of it and look here it is <laughs> and there's another piece that says buttons they weren't getting all that mm -mm. okay there's that so let me put uh, Jessica wrap a lot of these ladies you guys know um, so there's that and then I put in some lace from my collection I have a wonderful lace collection I've gotten rid of a lot of it Oh, and thank you to those who bought my came and bought my digitals. Thank you. They are out of retirement. I'm leaving them out of retirement because, yeah, shit's high now. Prices are high everywhere. Like eggs? Oh, my God. And milk? Oh, my God. And I don't drink milk, really, um, unless it's in my coffee. But everything is like, oh. So, yeah, I took them out of retirement in honor of inflation. <laughs> so, there's that. These are some cute little um, uh, clothing tags, and they're perforated here on the back. And you've seen these before. I've used these in a lot of journaling kits. And so I just gave you a, a generous amount of them and just tied it with some twine there at the top. So a lot of sewing theme. Let me go a little faster, or I will never get through this video. A lot of remnants. This is what I love about the tins, that... You really have to use your imagination um, with these, and they're just beautiful to pull from. And then here are some threads. They came like that. I didn't wrap them up like that. That's how they came. 
and then um, one of my dear customers I love her so much um, bought a lot of my buttons and these I kept for this tin just because I thought they were and I don't ever say no to her I didn't say no to this actually but I just uh, love these with that yellow and red and black and um, orange in the center so those are really pretty and those have never been used and this piece here I got from someone on Etsy um, it was a bunch of different stamps that she sort of blew up and turned into stickers and they're just really a lot of fun and I think all the tens may have gotten one of those so that's really fun for journaling junk journaling and then here is a beautiful uh, man and woman that I just sort of put down in there perhaps if you're doing the story 10 approach um, you might tell a story behind um, these two um, happy looking lovers or fun like they're having fun they may be not lovers they may be you know I don't know um, and then there's an extra button pack again and this one does have a button in there these are really fun again to put in um, journals I'm also going to link let me keep going while I'm talking I'm also going to link um, hang on guys sorry double time in it here I'm also going to link um, Debbie Ann at Ephemeris Vintage Garden and if you don't know what to do with this kind of thing um, way back in the day I'm still in love with that book she created a book where she sort of preserved these kinds of items like old items um, to just look at and have them there in that book like for forever um, you know and it's just really a neat book um, and I'll link that one um, this is silk pins um, but the packaging guys can we just stop at the packaging and again be careful when you're opening these things because they really do have pins in there this would be a cute little junk journaling paper to create for journals isn't that cool and then here's the other side here whoops here we go isn't that pretty and just the packaging alone um, in this is is worthy of, of saving just the packaging alone that would also be really pretty in a sewing book a pres preservation sewing book and then there's tons of buttons um, reds burgundies whoops sorry off camera there reds and burgundies and there's that I love these on these old button cards so there are those and then here is one of Jessica Rapp's avocado dyed envelopes I love these can open it up and write in it so pretty and then I also put in a uh, real cabinet cards from the day I had these listed in my shop but I used one set of them and took them out to spread them around in um, the tins and then here are some other um, pretty little things I know a lot of ladies now there's just so many um, dynamics to this kind of thing. Um, the packaging, for one, is just awesome to preserve because we won't ever see it like that again. Um, and then a lot of ladies are using um, these sewing pieces like this to put on bowl pins. To Jessica Rapp used them to snap and close little paper um, envelope-y kind of things, if I remember correctly. I, I know she sewed these down or put these on some kind of paper and maybe and or fabric I mean what they're made for and just kind of use them to snap close things so those are fun those are just that's just a lot of fun and again the packaging itself is always um, really nice I put in some of my very old long time ago I don't have any more um, paper doll uh, dresses um, I pedal these oh my gosh way back in the day and these were from the 40s or 50s if I if memory serves 
they were from the 40s or 50s so I put a little happy dress in there and it says diary my trip and then some winter um, feel in there and then you get some yo-yos and these are um, really beautiful um, and very light and they're old vintage um, this seamstress uh, really went to town with these um, and the fabric is hard to find um, it's feed sacky um, very old I believe these yo-yos were from the 20s those are always fun to sew with especially if you're doing a journal of stitchery journal <laughs> just fun you know fun stuff um, here is a remnant of some hearts and red flowers if you're using red or you like red the tin is red and orange and yellow and black so that's a little pop of color there and here is an old lace piece a snippet orange and black um, thread here's more beads in blues and yellows and golds um, very pretty if I act weird I'm watching the time guys and um and trying to get pictures as well and you may hear some noise I may have to turn on my air conditioner it's been so hot in Texas oh my god it's so hot <laughs> it's just hot but that's how we roll around here there's some bobbins and they've got red and black and a different red shade of red and there's an old spool now these I like um, the way ladies use these um, spools come on come through there we go the way uh, ladies use these old spools to wrap their little tiny um, snippets around and there's a thimble it's a plastic red one those are, are really fun and then there's a pink clip so just a little doodads and then I put some buttons in here there's all kinds of really cool things in here here's just two loose pins because again I like to mock these tins um, sort of set them up as if they are found right and they were in a seamstress's room this I got from the lovely um, Abby and I'm let me uh, write her shop down as well at Abby's um, vintage shop Okay, this is a charm and it's a sewing charm with a needle going through it if you can see that okay it's so cute I got this from her years ago but I love it so that would be pretty uh, as a book charm okay guys sorry about that I kind of got um, my, my camera went out okay so I think I was saying I was telling you guys that I got this from Abby at Abby's Abby's vintage shop got this from her years ago and I'll link her below I wrote it down already um, so there's that that would make a really pretty sewing book uh, book charm and then these are some old vintage buttons I have ton of antique and vintage buttons and I thought these were so art deco -y and just perfect again with this tin it just goes really nice with it that golden black and then I picked up the orange here with these old pretty um, cloth buttons and then there's a pink um, brad or rhinestone and then there's another beautiful bold red button that is a it's not a shank well yeah I guess it's not a shank but it's that old metal um, my magnet is um, maybe it's just plastic but it's old guys and it's got some patina on it and then I put in there's a canasta card in green and a die cut of roses I think all the tins got some of that and there's some little appliques and the word roses I took out of a book or newspaper and there are 
um, some pretty papers. This may have come out of Jessica Wraps, those really packed packs that she sends along. I'm not sure, but it's a possibility. I love that. Love that. I use it. I use it. I use it. And then I put in some Singer. This package is unopened. Um, there's the back of it in case. Guys, while I'm showing you this, I hate to tell you, I had to throw away an old Singer sewing machine. It was old, and I wanted to part it out. But life is just not like that for me anymore not like it used to be in terms of I have plenty of time to sit there and part things out and salvage everything but um, these are a size 14 and it was so sad but I did give it to um, a gentleman an old man who walks you know with a limp um, but guys if I tell you that old man works around and he picks up metals and cans and all kinds of things um, so there's a whole complete set of those size 14 Singer needles unopened. He picks up metal, and that would be really cool to preserve too, or use probably even better. He, um, to, I gave it to him because it was really heavy, and I knew he could pedal it for for some money. And there's some more appliques and just some old pieces of paper with old tape that I think is just fun to put down in books. And here is a little tube of buttons in green and red. It's a little tiny glass tube. Just really fun. I could have put beads in there. I should have put those beads in there instead of the plastic thing. But this is a really beautiful black um, shank button. And a lot of people, it's rusted too. A lot of people use these um, for those old cars. What are they called? I forgot what those they called them. The sweaters for winter time. I've sold these buttons in brown. And this is real leather. I just love that rust on there. And then here is a paper measuring tape. That could be cool ripped up and turned into tabs or tags or toppers or whatever. Um... This I thought was pretty art deco-y, and I might have shown you guys this. I got a whole set of bag of buttons, and there were some buckle snappy things. I don't know. It looks like a button, but you can hang it on something, maybe a belt, or I don't know what that's for. But I love this Bakelite-y feel of um, art deco-y design there. Really pretty, and it's perfect for this tin, I think. There's another little old vintage orange button that's got three little... Uh, designs there that's really pretty it's for me guys I know some of this is like what but it's always been about the little things for me and there's a more contemporary one of my contemporary it's from the 70s I threw away the packaging it was a doll where you make a doll it was like a doll uh, package and it was from the 70s so that, that's in there that's not near as old as Carla's um, and you can wrap it in gifted. You can also use a lot of this to gift to people. That's from, that might be from Jessica's packaging. I'm not sure. But there's a, what do you call those? I forgot what you call those. One of those things. And then I put in some stamps um, that are really pretty and orange and black and red and blue. They just are so perfect with the colors of um, the tin. Just really pretty colors, I think. So, yeah, I'm a, you know, I, I'm all about the little bit and preservation and turning recycled things into just beautiful little pieces. Every little piece is so perfect and important. And then there's a red, it looks like a Madonna. So there are some of those. little ephemera papers now they are ephemera now and then I, this bottle looks so beautiful <laughs> down in here this is an Adam's um, best vanilla at, um, extract and I love this and when you open it it smells like vanilla extract guys my great my grandmother used to put that whenever um, someone had a toothache she would put some of this on a cotton ball Put it on their teeth. Oh my god. It's like no. Because it's 
kind of sweetie, I guess. Anyway, I put that in there so you can fill it up with beads. Um, use it for kitchen decor or for your sewing room decor. Put some buttons in there. I could have filled this up, Lord. Guys, oh my God. I, I just tell you, but I don't like to... Um, Oh God, guys, I don't have time. I have so many buttons. There's just so many. I could show you. I could have easily filled this up with buttons, but I don't want to overwhelm this kit with one element, a lot of one element. I'll put it that way. So there's plenty of buttons in here. And then there is some music paper. It's been a long, long time. This is old. This is from, there we go. I have a whole book of this stuff. And some of the dates are different because it depends on when the song came out, right? I am a woman. I taught her everything she knows. So there's paper. And then I put in one of those old vintage cards that I found. I showed you guys these on video. It was a haul. And these are really old. They're really fun. And there's another beautiful playing card. Look at that. I hope I put one of those in my Asian kits. In my Asian kit. I hope I did. And then I put in more paper for journal pages. Reds. Oranges. This is an orchid cactus. And I put in, I've always been so fascinated by this kind of thing. And I don't know, y'all can tell me, I don't know if somebody has caught on to it or if they do it. The only person I can remember doing something like this is Sue Olson. But I love doll clothes. And this is a ripped, uh, old, vintage Barbie doll shirt. And I just think for a sewing journal, um, to sew it down in the journal on a page would be so cool. And I've mentioned this a thousand times before like sewing doll clothes and clothes down on a page. It's so thin and it's old. This is a vintage Barbie dolls piece in orange and yellow and green with a little lace collar. I mean lace um, sleeve on the edging there on the side. And then I put in this gorgeous um, rather large uh, piece of hand embroidery and I put that in there because I think you can do a ton of things with it it's just beautiful it's a table runner um, with gray and yellow and red different two different reds I love the idea of two different reds like the two different reds in um, these pieces here so I'm always inspired. Everything, every little piece inspires me to add something else. So this opens up. I won't give you the um, length of it. Well, should I? Let me see, guys. Hang on. Let me get a sip of water. If I ever told you Texas was hot, please believe me. It's hot everywhere. <laughs> it's not just Texas anymore. It's everywhere. Okay. This is um, about 16 and about 17 actually. And it's folded one in, in half, okay? And so you'd have to do this part in fours, I guess. So it's 10. So somewhere around there. I don't have time to open it up and, and do all that kind of thing. But there are at least these two patterns and I love it because oh and there's two more on this side it's gray and red and it is hand stitched okay just so you know so this is a pretty linen um, piece here and there's the bottom and there's not any stains on it that I could see guys it's pretty pretty clean um, there's no stains on it usually I have I get a lot of them that um, I gotta watch the clock okay I get a lot of them with stains on there and they're fun I love stains on 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 um, the embroidery it just I don't know it just shows that it's been loved and well kept and somebody's lived with it it's lived in a home and now it's time for a, a different space and book and and a stitchery project and there's the hand stitches there's the knots I like to show those so there's that 
Um, and that's really beautiful. I love those two different kinds of reds. Just gorgeous. And then here is a frame. And this is an old frame that I've had forever. This little guy set in my old... Um, I don't have a crafter room. I have an Etsy room. Because I'm a seller. I'm not a crafter. Most of you know that. Um, this set in my Etsy room. My first Etsy room um, for a long time. And so I just took um, these guys from an old vintage, um, what do you call it, school book and put, pop them in there. And then, of course, you can copy that. And that would be a really cute, uh, what do you call those things? Labels. <laughs> guys, yeah, I don't know all the lingo, lingo. I still don't know it after all these years. There's a piece of sewing fabric there and I've used this in some stitchery kits way back when um, and there's a remnant there so that's really fun and pretty and there's just a card um, someone gifted me these and I thought they're so pretty so that's paper ephemera then I put in some old vintage black and white pictures these are really gorgeous and they are of um, this lady just looks really beautiful in her pearls. Love the hairstyle. I love those old old um, hairstyles. And then this beauty is in the snow, um, in heels, no doubt, and probably stockings. And um, looks fuzzy because the picture is fuzzy. There we go. This picture is kind of fuzzy. And she's in her fur coat in the snow. And those are real black and white pictures. Hopefully that hang out okay you guys can see that okay and then I've got an old antique postcard I got these at an estate sale or they came in some happy mail or with some maybe an ephemera pack that I bought but I bought a lot of these from an estate sale I took y'all along with me at the time too so there's that fun paper a lot of these I'll put down in Jessica's uh, avocado envelope in that old envelope if they fit down in there. Here's an embroidery hoop that is really cool, um, um, but it's in really nice condition. So you can use that to stitch in. Um, here is another black, beautiful rose card. Um, I got these from... The, br the brown pear. Let me write it down. Sorry, guys. I have to do this. This video is going to be long, but I'm just doing these all one at a time, so it doesn't matter. I'll just label it, but um, I have to put in the brown pear um, because she has been, oh my gosh, such a really big help um, to with finding my, um, I have a big, huge Joker collection lot, but sometimes these days mine have become so repetitive and so hers are really nice and in and, and a variety. So I use those a lot. So that's a really pretty card. And then I put this tassel in here. Look at this. This is um, suede. <laughs> this black tassel. Because I saw Natasha at Treasure Books make tassels out of paper. And... I don't know why not she looks like she might whip around a tassel or two doesn't she it's all about her so that's in there and it's got um, a charm is his lucky brand and there's the hanging part of it there so I thought that was kind of fun that gives this a kind of a different vibe but it's okay it's all inspiration whatever you're working on there's something in here for you um, oh, let me put Natasha at Treasure Books. I will link her. Because I saw where well, she made a Treasure Books. I saw um, where she did those tassels out of paper. And I ran and said, oh, oh, I have a black tassel. I can put it in there. Everything inspires me. Everything. Um, and then this is just some um, die cuts. For whatever just for fun some some edges and this is in pink and white 
And then here is a potty. Beautiful little piece that has been stitched around and around. And I got this in something. I don't know if this was a... I forgot where I got that from. Somebody that came in something. Somebody gifted that to me. And then here is a teeny tiny little teeny itty bitty <laughs> little uh, sewing piece with beads on it. I think these pieces came out of uh, Elaine at the table, uh, the teacher's table. Look at that. I think that's where they came from. Look, isn't that adorable? That's a cow. And then here's another one of Elaine's pieces here. I love, 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 love her work. Look at that. And again, I'm going to use this idea to practice my stitching before I start doing the journal of stitchery. So there's that piece. There's two Elaine pieces in there. You guys are lucky. Whoever gets this, lucky. And then there's some old um, cards, more old cards. This has a beautiful red and gold around it. And there's some dancers. And there is a perfect black earring, a clip-on earring, no doubt. And again, that goes lovely if you're using this tin like I did for inspiration. Here is a hanky, or no, I'm sorry, a doily that's complete. No stains. There's the flower. Is it no stains? Let me look good before I say that. But there's the flower there. I don't know what kind of flower that is. Y'all figure it out. But it's got these pretty little uh, French knots on it. Um, and this pretty edging around it. Isn't that gorgeous? Stitchery. And here is a piece of old lace that I thought was perfect with her coloring. And then this piece here in her her bosom. You see that beigey piece right down in there? I love that. That kind of inspired this piece here. I got that in a lace pack. A lot of my laces I got from the old ones from two places. And oh my god, I was so lucky. My mom and I were just like thrilled and happy. And then um this beautiful lot some of this comes from jen jones thank you jennifer i love you i love you i love you i love you from jennifer jones um some of this comes out of her the big humongous <laughs> i can't even say broken jewelry lot because the lot of the jewelry wasn't broken <laughs> it wasn't broken so there's a, a sunflower with some green and gold and pearls, uh, burgundy and pearl. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. You can even turn that into book bangles. And then there's a piece. This uh, is an earring. Some of some of it I had myself, and most of it, a lot of it came from Jennifer's. And I thought this was just beautiful to go with um, this lady here. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then this piece here. And this earring here, which is a burgundy. I gotta watch the, the time, guys. If I get weird and quiet and start looking and deviating. And this, I love this. This is almost like a glass um, um, earring. That's an earring. An old clip-on earring. And it fits with this tin so well. So that's really pretty. And here is some very old vintage lace that I have humbly secured with a pin. This is very nice, very beautiful, very old lace. And that's out of my collection. So pretty. And then what else? And be careful with the pins again. And there's some uh, maxi piping in its packaging. And um, there is some black, oh my gosh, 
let me put this down because there's a bunch of those there's some black um, thread that came like that in a sewing um, tin just like that so you can use that to stitch and here are some um, pieces some remnants of um, an aspiring quilting now these are machine stitched which is just as lovely as hand stitched those are really pretty and there's a piece of my oh Lord Jesus coffee dyed coffee dyed <laughs> I'm sorry avocado dyed this is some of my grungy avocado dyed paper and love I miss doing avocado dye but I'll get back to it love life that's a napkin and here is thank you so much for this order here's your card already that I have put together and my thank you cards this is what they look like I'll insert one that a lady who bought my um, one of my lace packs I'll insert here Don't you love that? One of the cards um, that I made for her. And this one is no different. It's just this lovely. I made this a while ago and it's just random, random, random. There's a bunch of threads. There's a stamp. There's a serious looking dude. Um, there's a little pocket with a card in here. And another card that may have gotten sewn down in there. There's a uh, history card. So there's your thank you card. There's my handwriting. This is old. I'm now Renee's at it again. No longer GT Designs. So Renee's are, um, is at it again is what I go by now. And then these came from my great Annie's um, estate. I love these. I have used these guys. Oh my God. I kept some for myself. I have used these as toppers on tags. Aren't they pretty? Yes, I have used these as toppers on tags because they're just absolutely lovely. And you've got some brown leaves in there, some white ones, and I just pull them off and staple them onto things. They're really pretty. Uh, Nazi at um, Amity, Amity, Amity Bloom, um, one time I saw her stitching down some vines in a book I think it was just the coolest thing that was a long time ago I know I'm still stuck in the past I'll get out I'm telling you I'm gonna get out of it there's another um, teacher's table Elaine's piece and look at those stitches I oh, we love the stitches we love them hang on guys let me get uh, okay sorry I'm kind of trying to take pictures as I go okay and then here is some beautiful um, I think that's like wool it's very pretty comes with thread pieces and all here is another jewelry piece that is again a very perfect piece very matchy matchy I love it but you can use these for anything lots of peaches in here peachy colors here and speaking of peachy color love this linen here this is really beautiful and this is actually um, from something that I cut out and put into a, a pack um, and it's just beautiful um, very very nice to stitch down into and then these are old now these I think came from Jessica Rapp girlfriend has got some beautiful old oh my god way back when I think I showed you guys my box of of, of um, lacy things I got from her well some of these pieces I ordered a lot of few a lot of few things from her <laughs> that were not books um, and I love it because this is old fat feed sack look how pretty these are aren't they gorgeous so I'm sharing those I put some of those down in there for you guys and here's a few more look at that is that not perfect with this 
Is that not perfect with that or what? Somebody help me, help me now. As my daughter would say. <laughs> oh, my daughter was a character. <laughs> Every, everybody. <laughs> okay, um, here's more. And some of these came out of my stock and some out of uh, my uh, pack I ordered from Jess. Love, love, love these. And they're old, guys. They're old. They're old. You can't find those every day. And then this I found in my, I don't know, I was digging through something. Uh, hmm, maybe, yeah, no, maybe. That might have been gifted to me. I feel like that's mine. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on it. And then there's that pretty yellow piece. I thought that would be pretty with some of the blues and the yellows in her dress. Isn't that nice? So pretty. And then I put in this piece. Ooh, watching the clock. This is hand stitched. You can see all the little knots and cutoffs there by the seamstress. Isn't that pretty? Those are daisy stitches. Okay, let me continue on. I forgot where I left off, guys, but <laughs> I think I was taking some pictures. Okay, so this piece is where I left off here. And that's a pretty little um, hand-embroidered little panel. Tiny little panel. And then this is beautifully perfect. Isn't that gorgeous? That goes in there as well. It uh, goes with the uh, tin as well, I should say. Love that. And then, oh my God. Um, there are some little sewing um, pieces that will be in there like that. And these are really nice. Sometimes they're marked German, Germany. Sometimes they're marked uh, Japan. Um, but that's just a pretty sewing notion. And I'm going to put this aside um, in, well, let's do this. I'm going to put this in uh, something so that it doesn't get crushed because these are very delicate needle threaders. So there's that. And there are some uh, punches. There's like, I don't know out of a uh, paper bag or cardstock wrapping paper kind of paper. So those are in there. I love the square punches, the square tabs. Okay, and then, okay, what else did I put in here? Oh my God, I put something in here when I started this kit. What is it? Uh-oh, she's looking kind of... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see what's in here. Oh, yes. Okay, there's a bag there, and that's always fun and useful. Look at this pretty girl. Oh, I love this. Um, she's a cabinet card. And there she is. And it's got her name on there. I think if you Google her, you'll find her in, as an actress or something. But I put her in here because, I don't know, I just thought the, the hair flowing and the you know the dress attire kind of looks similar that kind of thing just using my imagination and let's see I put some matches in there so be careful with these um, these are old galaxy beauty salon which I think is perfect for this kind of thing maybe you might do a beauty salon journal Galaxy and these are from Vegas way back in the day and they are filled with matches just so you know and then I love this oh my god one of the garter belt um, snaps oh I love that I've used these before when I've guys I've found these in um sewing tins at thrift stores or estate sales and they're just fun or they're in bags um, they're just fun and then look at this gaudy looking thing oh my god this came from one of my 
bags of jewelry but look at the flowers in there can you see the little tulip flower so intricate I mean that's a work of art in itself look at the pearls around it it's an earring <laughs> filigree isn't that fun that's so fun that's fun stuff okay and finally oh my god we're at the bottom guys oh lord okay there's a spool that you can wrap your snippet roll stuff around and that's an oldie but goodie it's wooden another one and here's a, a metal thimble i don't think this one is signed Sometimes these say German, Germany, and sometimes they say China, and sometimes they say Japan as well. But anyway, there's a um, metal thimble, or I don't know what kind of material it's made out of. And there's a red one in here somewhere, this one. So you get two of those. And then here's another earring that's very uh, 1980s. Art deco -y, I would think, too. <laughs> Here's a big old bead um, that's got some diamond, rhinestone-y diamonds, and then there's the hole. That's a huge bead. That would be really cool as a um, charm. Here's a lips, lipstick charm. This is the, a contemporary, this stuff here. I think you can buy a lot of this stuff made in China. Um... There is a gaudy, big uh, drop earring in gold and black. Definitely plays up with the, the tin colors. And the last part. Um, this tin is actually pretty nice inside. I don't know if you can see the corners there. But um, it does have some rust. Um, on the edges there so yeah that's a lot of fun okay this is the other goodie stuff in here and while we're at it I'll just grab another one of these um, glassine bags and I'll just slip this stuff down in here so it doesn't run out get everywhere guys I don't know how I'm gonna put all this stuff back in there but anyway okay so there's some beads black beads Look at this. Isn't this pretty? This came out of, I think this came out of Jen's um, stuff. Jen Jones, she gave me so many pretty things. So pretty. This is a rhinestone from my little old collection. It's got a little hole there you can thread through and put it on a um, dangle. There's a key in there. Hang on. There's a little dog hair stuck in there. Okay, this is why I want the bag to put this in. These are these beads are black. They're really pretty, and I thought they kind of go with that button. Remember the button, guys? This one. So those beads, it's kind of like that same thing, but this is really nice. That's an earring. There's an old key in there. Who knows what it goes to? Maybe to um, a man's heart, a lady's heart. Um, there's some black buttons, and here is a little shoe. And um, here is just a safety pin. I might clip some of these things on that safety pin to hold them, secure them. There's an old button. Look at this rhinestone earring. I love that. Oh, I love that. That black um, screw on earring, screw back earring. And then here's another little piece here. And look at that big old black uh, rhinestone. Isn't that pretty? That's an earring. It's black with some black buttons. There's another, well, that's a salmon color button, and there's a bead, pretty bead. And then this pretty earring here that's kind of a filigree looking pen. And that pen still works. This almost looks like a navy blue, dark blue, as opposed to black. Okay, so there's that. Now, the last, 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 last part to this kit because this has gone on and on and on. And I have several more to... <gasps> no! Ah! Disaster. Hold on. Okay, something failed, guys. It must have been um, one of those black beads in there. And I'll double check, but yeah, if you're missing a bead or something in there, it's in my house. I'll send it to you later. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's that. And then, so what I'm adding to this, the final, final part of this tin, this beautiful, lovely tin. Um, oh, that's another bead of sorts I had in there. Um, the final part is this tiny little book that was in down in there. It's a red book, and it's called the the world's 100 best short stories and um, this is definitely um, <laughs> oh boy this is definitely one that I was just like I gotta let it go let it go I have to I have to I have to anyway the date on this one is 1927 from a 1910 publication and it measures, it's got short stories in it, and I think it's just so cool. Um, where's my measurement? Here it is. So this goes in here. It measures four by six and an eighth by three fourths of an inch, roughly. Yeah, three fourths of an inch. And it's in absolutely mint condition. I just love this. It's old. It's pretty. Um, let me see if I can get an image of that. Okay. So that's um, what's in this tin. Um, I think what I'm going to do is lay all the fabrics down in the bottom. And um, then just kind of layer and layer and layer. The fun part is when I actually put them together but you can see what happens um, when I take everything out it's it's just all, it's all over the place it is like everywhere right so you can kind of get the gist of a lot of this okay so that's this one guys um, I'll be back with the rest um, and I'll just tell you now that a lot of these will not uh, well by the time you hold on guys sorry okay I'm trying to double double work here by the time you guys um, see the video of this um, these will already be in my Etsy shop and they are what they are um, I'm not going to um, you know I wish I could discount things and stuff like that if no one buys it maybe they might go on sale in a couple months or something like that but I would just say now is the time to grab them because I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to make more of these now that school is is, is about to be underway so um, yeah, so that's that. Uh, let's see, what else is I going to tell you guys? Ooh. Oh, I can't take you out. If, if I took you out to my car, guys, I have a huge box um, that's in my car. And then this is another box here. It's a tin box. I put all that pretty cat stuff in here for... Um, there's more stuff under there. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, I have a box that is humongous that's going to... Uh, going to um disable art veterans art artists so that's going to be going out pretty soon too i still have it. it's huge it's in the back of my car it's been in there for like three days <laughs> it's okay but at the same time it's like i gotta get this thing shipped off so i gotta get it mailed um so that, yeah that's kind of where i am um with that um and it's just a lot of goodness and i did film some um, images for you guys to see what went in those and I'll try and post those too um, pretty soon okay all right guys this is box number one and what else was I going to tell you I had notes over here sort of um I think that's it for now yeah this is box number one by the time you see this it'll already be in my Etsy shop all right bye I'll be back with box number two